Unlike most of y'all, I don't enjoy watching Pain Drive, so I don't indulge in Bobby Altov's content. But when I seen she interviewed Sukuhana, I thought, darn, I don't got much to do. Let me give it a try. It was one of the worst decisions I've ever made as of lately. Good, but also powerful. Yeah, it is powerful. It like speaks up on you. It, yeah, but fast. it doesn't take too long. It no, it takes right like away. a minute, and then you're like, oh, it's so good, and then you're and then you're drunk. Sucking dick time. It was clear from the very beginning this interview was gonna be objectively insufferable. But I didn't know how bad it was going to be until it was too late. Sukahana started off the interview clearly in character and clearly searching for a moment. But I have a question. What camera am I supposed to be looking at? That's the camera that's this straight at mine. you. That one's also going to get you. This is one of those ideas that look better in your head and should have stayed in your head. But Sukahana tried to execute it thinking this was something fly to do and cool to do. When in fact she looked like an idiot and came across as just cringe. Okay, I like this one. Do what? I look fat in that one? Oh, that one's only getting her. Yeah. You're okay. Not. All right. You're in that one too, though. All right. Something about cameras, like it really just—I don't know. I just get into another vibe. What type of vibe? I don't know. Can you describe that feeling for me? I, I mean, I just—I just get a little turned on. Let me tell you what just happened. Sukahana did that little thing in the camera because she thought it was much cooler in her head than it actually looked when she actually did it. But when she did it, everybody looked at her as if she was an idiot and cringe. So she began to improvise, which is where we got that she's sexually attracted to cameras and she's turned on by cameras. This is just like D minus comedy. And it sucks because I feel like with Bobby Altov, these artists come in not knowing how to be themselves. But they come in trying to play up to humor they're really not used to. Tsukahana grew up in the projects in the hood. She's not used to white girl humor, and her trying to execute valley girl humor to me is just cringe. But she continues and try to improvise further and look for a moment, but it came across as even more cringe. <sighs> Baby, one thing about me is everybody knows I'm so good with a good Gucci, so I always make a lot of money. That's amazing. I don't... I didn't know that about you. What do, what do you know? That you're a musician. But that's why I'm interviewing you today, so I can get to know you. So I'm a musician? Mm hmm What the fuck that mean? Make magic or something? What is musician? I think that's, I think you're confusing that. Yeah, I'm not no musician. There's a minimum IQ requirement to be a good troll, and I'm not even talking about a three-figure IQ. I'm talking about you have to have at least a 95 IQ. You have to have a baseline IQ to be a good troll. Because if you don't, well, you come off as Sukahana, where you're trying to troll, but it comes off as just cringe as hell. Obviously, we know what you... I, I make music. I, I make I music. Am. And that's not all I do. I make music. I act. I'm a TV star, too. A young mogul. Uh -huh. I, just really quick, I think you're confusing. I'm not confusing nothing because I, you, you don't know. I, you thought that all I was was a magician or whatever the fuck you said. See, that's what I think you think I said. No, I said musician, I not what, magician. I don't think, baby, but I don't think. I, what is that? That's ghetto. I don't think. I know. That right there was Sukahana quickly abandoning the white girl humor and turning to the humor that she knows best, which is essentially play up to every stereotype about yourself, which is dumb, ratchet, stupid, or questionator. And she's playing up to that particular stereotype thinking is humor when in fact it comes off as cringy and everybody's looking at her like a freaking idiot. It becomes clear about 15 minutes in that these two are just parasitical clout monsters and they're both trying to use each other for a moment. Bobby Altov realizes that Sukahana is digging herself into a cringe hole and she doesn't want her to dig up out of it. So when Sukahana tells Bobby Altov that she gets wild in interviews when she drinks, Bobby tells Sukahana to quickly drink some more so Sukahana could continue to embarrass herself and create moments for Bobby. I don't need no glass. <laughs> don't be annoying. Wow, I'm gonna be drunk. It's okay. I've never gotten drunk in an interview before. I have. You have? What happened? Was it good? I mean, yeah. What happened? I just become more of myself and not give a fuck and just take over the internet that's something that i do okay let's cheers and have more as soon as sukahana told bobby that when she drinks liquor she takes over the internet bobby tells her drink more bro they're both using each other and it's just <laughs> insane to watch this happen in real time 
Now, as the interview progressed, Sukahana does a stunt that obviously she already had planned. Because when, like, whenever Bobby Altoff brought up any guy, Sukahana would tell Bobby, call them, call them, call them, call them. Like, when Bobby Altoff brought up how she was friends with Mark Cuban, Sukahana was pressing Bobby to call Mark Cuban. Like, she kept pressing Bobby to call any guy that Bobby brought up because Sukahana had this stunt already in her head, which is she was going to call a random guy that she was talking to and have the guy confirm that she's Sukahana with the good coochie. Ah, uh, hamburgers. I don't need your phone. Give me my phone. I don't give a fuck. I'll call the niggas. How, how do you know? You talking about somebody that owned the NBA, baby. I know <clears throat> niggas that got money too. For some weird reason, Sukahana kept repeating that Mark Cuban owns the NBA. Despite the fact that Bobby Altov kept reminding her that Mark Cuban owns a team in the NBA. But I guess she thought it was really funny, which is why she kept on repeating he owns the NBA. Again, this is just cringe and low-level humor. He's like, I called him during my last interview. I wonder if he'd answer if I called Who's him. Who's Mark Cubans? He's a billionaire. He owns the Dallas Ma Mavericks. He, so you said anybody at NBA made me think of that. He owns the NBA? Uh, no. You know him? <laughs> Not the whole NBA, the Dallas Mavericks. He owns a team. How you know him? He was on. Right, so let's get back to her calling this random guy to confirm she got a good coochie. Now, this is clearly pre-planned in a pre-skit that she thought, again, another idea that sounded way better in her head, but then when she actually executed it, it just came across as idiotic and cringe. Maybe. Who are we calling? Yeah, I'll call anybody. Anybody? Mm -hmm. I'll call my motherfucking kids. They going now. Your kids? Yeah. Yeah, everybody know who the fuck I am. I'm happy your kids know who you are. Let me go ahead. So who who I need to call, a man or a girl? W which one? Anyone. I, I'm just confused because, of course, the person in your contacts are going to know who you are. Are you calling your mom? Who are you calling? You ready? He Hello? Hey, I, I'm, I, got, I got this phone on speaker. I'm just letting you know because I don't want you to talk about nothing that don't need to be said on this phone. So... I'm with Bobby, and I told her that if she called anybody, they're going to know Suki with the good coochie. So I want you to tell her who Suki with the good coochie is. Tell her why they call me Suki with the good coochie. <laughs> that shit stand for real. real life. Why stamp? Because the coochie good for real. She don't know. She don't know about it. She don't know about it. And she never asked to know about it. Now, I'm not a cruel guy, so I'm not going to put you guys through much more of this insufferable content. But y'all let me know in the comment section, man. If you watched this interview, did you enjoy it? And if you're still watching, click on this video right here to find out about the huge Joe Budden and Kai Sinai drama. I'm out of here, folks. Peace.